the wait is over. If you were a Baltimore Raven and Kansas City Chiefs fan, because tonight the NFL returns. What? Tonight the NFL returns. What? The NFL returns tonight with the NFL kickoff. Oh, hell yeah. But for us Rams fans, we still have over 72 hours to wait because we play later on in the week. But first, finishing up our season preview for the Rams and then preparing you for Sunday night football. It's Ramley Talk, and you're watching on the Playmakers Blog YouTube channel, and you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio. Let's get it started. Maybe you from the 1970s when the Los Angeles Rams was known as the Prison Forsome because of that defensive line. Or maybe you were in the city of St. Louis, the gateway to the Midwest, where the greatest show on turf brought home the first ever Super Bowl championship. Or maybe you in the here and now with the Rams back in LA, winners of Super Bowl 56. You can rock Harry Dickinson. You can rock Marshall, Fall, Isaac, Bruce, and Kurt Warner. Or maybe you walk in Cooper Cup, Aaron Donnie, and Matthew Stafford. It doesn't matter, but when it comes to this, it's all about the Los Angeles Rams. Horns up, Rams house. Time to talk Rams football. Well, 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 Rams fans and NFL fans across the world, we made it. We have made it. The NFL kicks off tonight. Baltimore Ravens, Kansas City Chiefs kicks off the NFL season. So good to have the NFL back. And then tomorrow down in uh, Brazil, we got the Green Bay Packers and the Philadelphia Eagles going at it. And then we get college football Saturday. Then we get to NFL Sunday, the first week of the NFL season. And uh, our team, the Los Angeles Rams, they are being Detroit to take on Detroit Lions. I would get to some news and notes for that game later on in the show. All right. But welcome to Ramley Talk on this Thursday, September 5th, 2024. Thank y'all for tuning in. If you're watching on our YouTube, our YouTube channel page, please hit that subscribe button as we are slowly growing incrementally. Growth is still growth, no matter what. If it's small, medium, or large, it's still growth. And I'm thankful for that. Hit that notification, hit that subscribe button, let you know everything that we doing on the Playmakers Blog Network. You stay tuned. And then for all my podcast listeners on all your favorite platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, and wherever else you can find your podcast is at. So the Playmakers, as you see, I'm walking my L.A. Rams hat, the, the all-white hat, the second time I'm wearing it during this season. And I'm walking the all-white because the NFL is back, baby. It's all about the Rams, and we are wearing white. Sunday, I will get to the jersey colors 
in a bit because that's part of my news and notes for the Rams. But thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for listening. I'm going to finish the season preview. Weeks 15, 16, and 17, and 18. Well, we face all three of our divisional rivals, and we have the Jets in the middle of it as we go to the Meadowlands to face them all. So those are the last four games I have to preview, give you my season prediction. If the Rams make the playoffs or if the Rams will miss the playoffs, if the Rams win the NFC West or do somebody else win the NFC West, stuff like that, we're going to finish that up. But then let's get you some news and notes and everything you need to know about the Rams versus the Detroit Lions going into Sunday Night Football because we already previewed it early in the week. So I might bring it up and recap everything just a tad bit so you have everything that you need for this Sunday night game. All right. With that being said, let's get it cracking with some news out of the Rams camp. The Los Angeles Rams are adding Scott Frost to the coaching staff. I saw this. I was like, wait a minute. Interesting. So I had to do some diving, you know. So let me bring it up right here. And it says here, the Rams are making a new addition to their coaching staff. Head coach Tom Bay on Monday confirmed that they are hiring from Nebraska and University of Central Florida head coach. Scott Frost. Frost would help out with special team coordinator Chase Blackburn in that phase, but also work with Los Angeles Rams offense and defense, according to McVay. Of course, McVay said, quote, just to be able to get a quality caliber coach like him in a building, as you guys know, you know, we've had a lot of turnover for the right reasons, and you cannot have enough good quality people in the house. And really, to get him in, it was something that he wanted to do. And like I said, their mature connection. So there's a lot of people that are excited about it. Close quote. That's from our head coach, Sean McVay, on adding Scott Frost to the fold and the Rangers camp. For those of you who don't know or need to refresh on Scott Frost, Scott Frost served as the head coach at Nebraska from 2018-2022 after holding the same position as head coach for the University of Central Florida, or known as UCF. From 2016 to 2017, prior to UCL, he was on the Oregon staff from 2009 to 2015, serving as a wide receiver coach his first four years before being elevated to offensive coordinator and quarterback school for his final three seasons. And just see how Scott Frost does in the NFL, seeing how he's been an assistant coach for the Los Angeles Rams, see how that works out, you know, see how he does and do whatnot and stuff like that. But welcome, old boy, Scott Frost. I get to like you again. I liked you even when you was at UCF. Then you went to Nebraska. I couldn't. I didn't like you then. Now you with the Rams, so I have to like you again. Do a good enough job. I won't say nothing. But it depends on what you do. All right. <clears throat> Moving on, we have the uh, 2024 Rams Day giveaway schedule. And as you can see, if you can. Uh, when we host the San Francisco 49ers in week three, the home opener, that'll be Sean McVay bobblehead day. All right. So let me just go through it like this. The Rams are kicking things off with the Rams home up against the San Francisco 49ers on September 22nd. Well, Rams season ticket members will receive a limited edition Coach McVay bobblehead. Limited quantities will be available and only for members who attend the game. For additional information, visit. For a definition about the various benefits of being a Rams season ticket member, see the Rams go to Los Angeles Rams.com. But that's the beginning of it. We're gonna continue on. When the Rams have a three game, three game home stand with you know three games that are in prime time, head to October 24th, Thursday night, when we host the Minnesota Records on a Thursday night. That would be the uh Rams. Phone finger night. Oh, so I say LA phone finger night. All right. Then when we go, then November 11th, Veterans Day, Monday night football, when the Miami Dolphins come walking into town to the SoFi sale, that will be the military theme wall flag night. You'll be getting a, a flag from the Los Angeles Rams military style. That'll be interesting to see. We can weigh those tiles like the terrible tiles for the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Miami Dolphins. That'll be interesting to see on a Monday night on Veterans Day. Crazy, we playing. We're playing on Veterans Day. 
And then the final of the uh, primetime home games will take us to November 24th, just before Thanksgiving, Sunday night football when the Philadelphia Eagles come to town. That would be Jersey Rally Tower Day. And you probably be getting different tiles on the on the scratch. Looking at you see a 99. That's an Aaron Donald jersey there. That should be fun to cap it off for the for the giveaway of primetime games. Okay, because the other two games there are not in prime time, they are regular games. So when we face the Buffalo Bills, we're talking Rams training card night or day, should I say? Then when we face the Arizona Cardinals, six can Rams coolers. So with the Cardinals, you can get a cooler. With the Bills, you get trading card. We get training cards. The Eagles is Jersey Tower Day. Monday night against the Dolphins, flat military theme wall flat. Thursday night against the Vikings, you're talking LA foam finger. And then our home open against the San Francisco Fortnite, which is week three. Bobblehead, Bobblehead Dave with Coach Sean McVay. All right, so. Those of you who will be able to attend these games, go ahead and get your giveaway, get your free stuff, and have a ball cheering on the Los Angeles Rams. Now, our jersey selection schedule. These right here, so everything that's in white is the Rams wearing the white jersey. The two gray-looking games, There are that's when they are wearing their bone uniforms, or bone jerseys, but I believe they're wearing the entire bone uniforms there. And then the blue is obviously when the Rams are rocking the blue jerseys, okay? So break it down for you. As you will see, we're talking wearing the bone uniforms for two games this year. That'll be week two when we go to Arizona, which is next, next Sunday. Not this Sunday, but next Sunday. And then that Thursday night game where it's, where it's a L.A. phone finger night against the Minnesota Vikings. They'll be rocking the bone jerseys in that one. And then the blue jerseys will be rocked when we host Green Bay, when we host the Las Vegas 8, the Las Vegas Raiders, when we Monday night football against the Miami Dolphins, Sunday night football against the Philadelphia Eagles, the Buffalo Bills, the Arizona Cardinals, and the Seattle Seahawks, okay? All of them are home games. And then the rest of the games, the rest of the eight games are, will be white jerseys. So now you know. Now. With that being said, season previews right here. This is where I left you off at. This is where I left you off at. Two and two. But when we come back, weeks 15 through 18. So let's take a quick break and we'll be back. And we're going to close out our season preview. All right. Order to Haiti. Your butt and gut becomes one. Join the reformer of hooker whores. This is my daughter, Placenta Booty Johnson. Join the bronze car. And ever you are in distress, mm -hmm. take off your baseball cap and throw it in the air. Join your very own superhero of broadcasting, Chris Bass. So whatever color the crown they get, they palm it and do two circles, <laughs> and that translates to, I can be the black people. As she takes you through the week's paces in... Baseline live every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Central. <laughs> no, Pacific Time Zone people, just stay asleep when this is on live and just catch the recording. Oh, I'm sorry. Exclusively on the Chris Base YouTube channel. Welcome to Ringside Chaos, the professional wrestling discussion segment of the Bear of Texas podcast. The only professional wrestling podcast in the world where pro wrestling is discussed passionately, with confidence, with great knowledge, and most of all, in the most sophisticated way. So brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, because chaos is about to be unleashed. Thing with Tony Khan now being in talks to WWE, I'm going to be honest with you. I spoke to this with Ricky Litwinkowicz, aka the Master of Mayhem, and he honestly believes that me talking about Tony Khan buying WWE is a basically I'm kind of wasting my time because Ricky believes it's never going to happen. Okay, 
Now, I, now don't get me wrong, Ricky. I respect his. I respect what he says. He's he could very well be correct, but I got to be honest with you. The fact that Khan is interested in supposedly buying WWE, I mean, to me, that's definitely worth talking about. Now, <laughs> now I should mention this. Shout out to Ricky, by the way. And I got to mention this: that even Jim Cornette already had something to say, and he said, and I quote, "Ridiculous to think that could happen." Unquote. <laughs> It's a wrestling fan that's been super supportive of Brody Lee as a wrestler and everything that WWE could have done with him and, you know, everything that he could have shown and, you know, offered for the wrestling business. You know, for me, I, just, I wasn't just a fan of Brody Lee himself, like, in character. I strongly respected him, you know, as a human being. Like, I had a lot of respect for Jonathan Huber. You know, that's Mr. Brody Lee's real name. So, basically, I had a lot of respect for Brody Lee... Luke Harper, and of course, Mr. Jonathan Huber. This particular episode was about World Class Championship Wrestling. And the episode title is, you know, WCCW Wrestling's Lone Star Legacy. And because I am the Bear of Texas, and I do hail from the Dallas-Fort Worth area of the state of Texas, World Class Championship Wrestling was basically my territory as far as being a wrestling fan goes. Ladies and gentlemen... Ringside Chaos is available on all streaming platforms including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and YouTube. Oh yes, the tradition, the pageantry, the spectacle, the history, the slut. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I, I gotta rep my brother's stuff right. All my DMV soldiers, stand and welcome to the Commander's Gridiron Report. You want your commanders to be repped right? Well, D. Willie is your man. Commander's Gridiron Report. Every Monday at 3.05 p.m. Eastern, 2.05 p.m. Central. Exclusively on the Sertoba Media YouTube channel. Music by J. Cool. Where my soldiers? Right side, right side. Commander. Commanders. Where my soldiers? Left side, left side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Rimley Talk on this Thursday, September 5th, 2024, as the NFL season returns tonight. But before we can talk actual games being played, we have to finish our season preview, okay? As you can see on your screen, we have the 49ers, the Jets, the Cardinals, and the Seattle Seahawks to begin with. Now, now I'm gonna show y'all again. Let me bring it up. When I left y'all last week, I had us going two and two from weeks eleven to fourteen, beating the beating the Patriots, beating the Saints, but losing to the Eagles and losing to the Buffalo Bills, losing Sunday night to the Eagles and losing another home game to the Buffalo Bills. Left y'all two and two, but overall ten and three. And I think ten wins will get you in. So we at ten. We're right at the cut line. So a, a victory or two more, and the Rams are in the playoffs. When they win the NFC, we shall see how I feel about that. Now let's get to it. We got the San Francisco 49ers Thursday night football in Santa Clara Levi Stadium. All right, that's this game here could be marked down as the game to determine who wins the NFC West. You know, things play out the way that I'm saying that they'll play out. This game right here will determine who will win the NFC West and who will possibly get a top seed in the NFC West. I mean, you're talking in the NFC, we're talking one and two. I ain't talking three and four. I'm talking one or two, okay? I feel the winner of this game will be a top two seed in the NFC, all right? Last time that we talked talk to you about what they did, defeating the Green Bay Packers in the divisional round, defeating the Detroit Lions in the NFC Championship game. Before listening to the Kansas City Chiefs for the second time in the Super Bowl, went through the pop where he says, here's the difference. Brandon and I, you got a four-year, $120, $120 million extension, and then Trent Williams and his hold out for 40 days, and he just agreed to a three-year, $82.66 million extension earlier this week. So the San Francisco 49ers are coming to the season fully healthy, fully staffed for this year. And then I said in week three, I had the 49ers beating us because I haven't seen our starters beat their starters in an actual football game. So 
Yet again, around this time, and it's in Santa Clara, we do terrible. We don't play well in Santa Clara. Even though we won week 17 when nobody didn't play anybody, but we just play terrible in Santa Clara when it comes to important games. This is going to be a very important game. And the 49ers get back to sweeping us, so that means the San Francisco 49ers, in my opinion, will win the division. And unfortunately, we have to settle for a wild card. Because after that feisty fight between the Niners and the Rams at Santa Clara, we got to fly across the country to take on Ann Rodgers and the New York just at the Meadowlands at MetLife Stadium. But the Jets and Aaron Rodgers is back from an Achilles injury that only took four plays to end four plays to end his season and the Jets season, which a lot of people use. That's what they use for us to act on for the Jets just in the season. That's what having four plays in. It was just in the season. Zach Wilson, 60.1 completion percentage, 2,271 passing yards with eight passing touchdowns, seven in the Southern Stone. Quarterback rating of 77.2. He also had two rushing touchdowns. The starting running back, Brees Hall, 223 carries, 994 yards. He was six yards away from a 1,000-yard season, five rushing touchdowns. He also added four receiving touchdowns. And the number one target, for Aaron Rodgers would be Gary Wilson. Last year, without Aaron Rodgers, he had 95 catches for just over 1,000 yards receiving and three receiving touchdowns. Now, they traded Zach Wilson out to Denver. Tyrod Taylor is now the backup to Aaron Rodgers from the New York Giants. They brought in Mike Williams, wide receiver from the Los Angeles Chargers. Morgan Moss in a trade. With the Baltimore Ravens for a offensive tackle, they also bring in offensive tackle Tyron Smith from the Dallas Cowboys. They drafted quarterback Jordan Travis in the fourth round from Florida State, who was recovering from an ACL injury. Defensive lineman Javon Kenlaw from the San Francisco Partner. That was a good pickup. And then they did trade for edge rusher Hassan Reddick. However, he wants to be paid. And but I missed that one foot into the facility with the his new team he hasn't they he hasn't done nothing but wants to be paid in a way miss you know i'm not even gonna get into it <laughs> last time we faced off with the jets it was back in 2020 week 15 and we got beat by the jets this when the jets were terrible and they beat they came into la they beat us 23 to 20. that was a game that was very distraught for us and the Rams fans i remember that feeling because I did the show. It was a very distraught show for me. We lost to the Jets, man. We lost to the Jets out of all teams. The Jets! At that point in time. This ain't the same Jets. This is a whole different Jets. So going to their building late in the season. We're talking week 16. Most likely going to be cold. It may, may even snow at that time. Gonna be a tough one for us if we don't do good in outdoor cold conditions, as we all know. So the Jets. And Aaron Rodgers defend home turf. As if Aaron Rodgers is still healthy, by the way. All right. So back to back losses for the Rams on that one. I think that'll be three straight losses. The Bills, Niners, and the Jets. That's a three game losing streak for the Rams. The world's not crumbling, okay? They are 10 and they are 10 and 5 right now, okay? Then we host the Arizona Cardinals in round two of this matchup. And then as we did earlier. Nothing really, nothing has changed from the first time I talked about the Arizona Cardinals. They still have everything out in play right now. But guess what? We're going to sweep the Arizona Cardinals. 11 and 5 right now. We are at 11 and 5. Firmly in the wild card spot like we was last year. And then we finish it off at home against the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks, nothing has changed with the Seahawks as a lady. But I will say the Seahawks will probably be fighting for a wild card spot at the moment in time. And trying to beat us in L.A. would be a mission of theirs to get in the wild card. Unfortunately, we're going to sweep them too. And most likely Seattle not going to make it. They're going to be on the outside looking in. And we win. So we're going to go on a three-game losing streak. We're going to lose to the Bills, the Niners, and the Jets. And then we're going to finish off on a two-game win streak getting ready for the playoffs. That will put us at 12-5 and five on the year. Just missing the title because we lose to the San Francisco 49ers on Thursday Night Football. As they would get a top two seed, we'll be probably the fifth seed going in. 
All right, and we'll face whoever wins the NFC South at their place, which shouldn't be no problem. All right, so that would do it for the season preview. 12 and 5, wild card team. San Francisco wins the San Francisco wins the NFC West. We'll become a wild card team. The fifth seed going to whoever wins the NFC South. Handle business against them, and then we'll go from there. Okay. I do feel like we'll win the wild card round this go around. And then we'll face whoever else, whether it be the San Francisco 49ers, the Detroit Lions, whatever the case may be, maybe the Green Bay Packers, depending on how what they do. Depends on how things shake out. Oh, I forgot about the NFC, NFC East. Philly wins the NFC East, so we might end up facing Philly again. But we'll go, we'll win a wild card round. And we'll move on to the divisional round. Then we'll we'll play it from there. We'll play it from here from there. Okay. But we will be in the playoffs. We will have a great record. We just just we, if Sean Bay can conquer Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers, we're gonna have a hell of a season. That's the only thing. Can he conquer Kyle Shanahan and the San Francisco 49ers? I mean, a fully loaded Sam not not that crap that we had last year when none of the stars on well, most of the stars on both sides didn't play because everybody was already solidified. San Fran was already solidified in the morning seed, and we was already solidified as the sixth seed. Nothing was to gain in that game, okay? But to finish it out as sportsmen, that's what that was. With things on the line, week three, week 15, especially week 15. That's a Thursday night game, and that's most likely going to be for the division of crown in that game. Can we go to Santa Clara and beat the 49ers when there is something to play for? Not when it was nothing to play for, and we happen to beat them, and we beat them surprisingly, if I'm being completely honest. But can we go to San Francisco? Can we beat them in a meaningful game, week 15, Thursday night football? NFC West title on the line. Winner of that game was the division and the top two seed in the NFC. Until I see it, I can't pick us because I haven't seen it done. San Fran has been owning us until I see differently. And Sean McVay could do it this year. I got to see it first, all right? I have to see it first. I just got to. With that being said, another com- uh, quick commercial break here. When we come back, get you ready for Sunday Night Football because that's all that matters now. We're here. The NFL week kicks off tonight. Sunday night, we're on center stage. I, I <laughs> love you, you <laughs> morons. You kiss from the block, <laughs> new addition, dear, whatever the law firm is. <laughs> Sincerely, the U.S. Supreme Court. Ben Affleck, <laughs> Matt Damon. Go f- yourself again, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Into the Net FC. Killing it, Bappe just all of a sudden finally understood his role, and I think he finally understood that everything Killing it, Bappe has accomplished already. You know, there is still a hell of a lot of wait, waiting for him in the future. Killing Mbappe is only 24 years old. He has accomplished so much. And you know what? Killing Mbappe has not even reached his prime. I'm finally seeing, you know, the Marcus Rashford we have been hoping for for such a long time, you know. But, you know, this game, you know, after after everything Manchester United has been, you know, doing lately, you know, th- this was actually the ultimate test, you know, to see if Manchester United, you know, all, honestly was all of a sudden for real. I, I explain this. The United States, maybe they have to suffer this loss as a lesson to learn to prepare for the future. Because four years from now, the World Cup is in not one, not two, but three countries. The United States of America, Canada, and Mexico. Into the Net FC is available on all streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and YouTube. Get Mouse Entertainment with Paramount Plus. Stream new movies such as Mean Girls, Transformer Rise of the Beast, and Good Burger 2 with Paramount Plus. Stream live sports such as the UEFA Champions League, the NFL on CBS, 
the PGA Tour, and March Madness. Cats hit CBS shows such as Fire Country, Ghost, NCIS, and more, but also catch exclusive originals for Paramount Plus such as Special Arts Lioness, The Family Stallones, and the hit series Halo. The new streaming home of Showtime. Watch Showtime original series and movies when you sign up with Paramount Plus with Showtime. Make it a fun, action-packed adventure for the whole family and create kid-friendly profiles for the little ones. So much to stream with Paramount Plus with over 45,000 full episodes from BET, CBS, Comedy Central, MTV, Nickelodeon, and more. Paramount Plus plan starts at $5.99, but if you subscribe today, you'll get a free trial. Paramount Plus, Mountains of Entertainment. In a world where chronicles of the past are brought to the streams, whether the content is relatable or completely beyond your realm of life, there is no shadow of a doubt that this show is absolutely full of shenanigans. Get ready for D. Willie in the Evening. This Sunday at 10.05 p.m. Eastern. Exclusively on Sertoba Media, where the struggle is real to be awesome. Whether it's the men's college game. The way that this season has been going? Uh, yeah, anything is possible. The women's college game. And how passionate Angel Reese was at that press conference. They got their mojo now. The WNBA. AJ Williams, Brianna Stewart, one and two. Followed by Brittany Griner, Aaliyah Boston, Jackie Young. Or the NBA. The Lakers had a 0.8 chance of winning. And then what happened in the fourth quarter? LeBron James by himself. Outdid the Clippers. You will get any and all of the information right at your fingertips or your earlobes. Join the playmaker as he breaks down all things basketball in Shooting Lights Out on the Playmaker's blog, network, YouTube channel, and where you can find podcasts. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as we get ready to close it out here on this episode of Rimley Talk, pretty short episode of this one because we want to get get you the news, the information, everything that you need so that when Sunday night gets here, you're ready to rock and roll as Ram fans as we head to Detroit, Michigan. There it is, Sunday night football. Mike Tirico, Chris Collinsworth on the, on the call. Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan. A rematch of the NFC wildcard game when the Detroit Lions won it 24-23 over the Los Angeles Rams. Time for talking is over. The season is here. There's no turning back now. All right. And here we go. Get you the numbers. The spread is the Lions are three and a half point favorite, which is the normal spread when you are the home team. You usually get three to three and a half. The Lions are getting three and a half, so that's how it does. Uh, the money line is 195 in favor of the Lions and plus 165 if you want to go with the Rams as the underdog. The over under is 50 and a half, so can both of these teams combine for 51? It was 20, 24, 23 last in the wild card game. So you looking at that's what 47 points. So the under looks pretty good. The under looks pretty good. If you want to take the over, you can. Because it is the first week of the season. Okay. And these are from ESPN Biz, as you can see on the screen here. Uh, injuries, injuries, injuries. All right, for the Rams, there is Williams questionable, Kobe Durant questionable, Rob Havenstein questionable. Rob Havenstein is the main question. Why are you saying it's the main question here? Because we want to make sure that our offensive line are together, they are fully intact, and they can get that cohesive unit to protect Matthew Stafford. But three questionables, of course, we already knew about Connor McDermott and Anthony Goodlaw, who are on the IR, they will they will be missing the season. For the Lions, Lauren Strickland, safety, questionable. Ifutu, my feeling you, is also questionable for a safety. But no no main starters for the Detroit Lions on the injury report list. Okay? So they are coming in fully healthy for the Lions. The Rams, a little bit 
less healthy than the, than the Lions, but still should be enough to contend and try to win a game down in uh, Detroit, Michigan at Ford Field, the Motor City. And then, of course, the game will be broadcasted on NBC and Peacock. If you have the Peacock app, you can still watch the game. Okay. If you want to listen to it on the radio, ESPN LA, 710 AM, Jack FM, 93.1 FM, and to log out, 1330 AM is the little, is the stations that you want to listen to the Ramley Talk on the radio stations. Those are the stations there, of course. We're on Sunday Night Football, so that's NBC and Peacock. So with that being said, that will do it for today's episode. Thank y'all for tuning in. Okay, the season is here. We're off and running. Can the run start off 1-0 as I predicted? I predicted the run will flip the script on the Detroit Lions and come out with a one-point victory, maybe a field goal victory in this one. And we go one and oh before we head to Arizona for week two. And that's where we come back next week on next Thursday. We'll recap what took place at Four Field. And then we'll preview the game heading out to Glendale, Arizona at State Farm Stadium against the Arizona Cardinals. For the Playmaker here at the Playmakers Blog and Ramley Talk, y'all have a good one. Deuces. For tuning into Ramley Talk. Ramley Talk is sponsored by Fanatics, Lids, and Paramount Plus. Get your favorite sports appeal with Fanatics or Lids and get great streaming service with Paramount Plus. If you want to donate to the program, you can donate to us via Cash App. Dollar sign D Playmakers. That is again dollar sign D Playmakers. And remember, you can follow and subscribe to Ramley Talk on all podcast directories, including Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. And those of you who are on Apple, leave us a great review, leave comments on how you feel about Ramley Talk and the episode that you listen to. Tune in again next time for more Ramley Talk, hosted by the Playmaker.